I always thought that I have a healthy heart. Uh, until one day when I was rushing to take a train, I feel that uh, there's tightness in my heart and I feel that I don't breathe normally. So I was a little bit worried and I went to see a doctor and the cardiologist said that I need to go to an angiogram. Uh, Mr. Chiu had a special x-ray. It's called a coronary angiogram. Uh, the way they do this is they shoot a uh, colored solution uh, via a very small uh, tube that is placed in the origin of these coronary arteries. And uh, this dye then flows down the coronary arteries and then it will highlight where the narrowings or the blockages are. Now, Mr. Teo had uh, quite significant uh, coronary artery disease, meaning to say that uh, there were quite a number of uh, blockages and narrowings. In cases like Mr. Teo, when there are three vessels that are all narrowed significantly, uh, the best option is, uh, it has been shown from uh, worldwide studies, that the best option is coronary bypass surgery. The doctor strongly recommended that I have to go for uh, bypass surgery. I was definitely very, very scared and concerned because uh, this involved opening my the, the rib cage and uh, I was concerned in the sense that uh, what there will be uh, complication and what if I don't survive. Fortunately, uh, the case manager and the financial controller will be there to explain to me uh, how I can use my medic safe and medic shield uh, to pay for my medical expenses. Um, my name is Nava. I'm the case manager for Mr. Tiu. I was his uh, contact person from the time he saw Prof. Michael and up to his discharge. And even now, after his discharge, I'm still his contact person. So I helped him in uh, preparing for the surgery by advising him uh, what are the uh, precautions he should take, what are the medications he should avoid before surgery, as well as after surgery, how to take care of himself at home. I was warded the night before because the surgery was scheduled at 9 a.m. Uh, that night, I must admit that I could not sleep soundly because there were concerns, there were apprehension. I prayed and uh, I was able to have a restful night. And the next morning, I woke up at 6 o'clock and uh, I got myself to change and uh, get ready for the uh, surgery. Coronary bypass surgery is a common procedure worldwide. We do it uh, almost daily in, in our centre. Uh, what we do is we take a segment of vein from either the thigh or the leg or we take an artery that runs behind the chest wall on the left side and we place it uh, what we call downstream from the block. So this new segment of vein or artery provides the alternative route for blood to reach the heart muscle. Coronary bypass surgery is quite a complex procedure and it's always possible to have complications uh, like a stroke or a, a major wound infection. But uh, for Mr. Teo's case, it went very well. We finished operation in, in, in within four, one and a half hours and he had a very short hospital stay. And the last time we saw him, he has done quite well. Our job starts when the patient comes to the ICU uh, from the operating room. We make sure that uh, we get a good handover uh, to know the details of what operation has been done and what has happened in the operating room. Then we examine the patient, we make an assessment. Once the assessment is made, uh, we then make a plan. The plan for the patient will have essentially two stages. Uh, the first stage would be to get the patient off the breathing machine. So for that, we make sure that uh, we know how much of sedation the patient wants, how much of painkiller the patient wants, uh, how much of fluids the patient wants. Uh, may, uh, it, some patients may need uh, medications to support their blood pressure. So once that stage is over and the patient is out of the breathing machine, um, the next stage starts. Uh, that's where we get him ready for the ward. Uh, we make sure that he's able to eat and drink. He doesn't, we make sure that he doesn't lie in the bed 
because if you're going to lie in the bed for a long time, you're going to develop muscle stiffness and clots in the legs. So the physiotherapist then takes over. The physiotherapist makes sure that he's mobilized. Once uh, everything is set in motion and we are confident that the patient can take care of himself in the ward, we make arrangements uh, for the patient to be shifted to the ward. I mean, the ICU experience, in essence, is a team effort. It's a group of uh, doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, respiratory therapists working towards the same goal, get the patient better. After I stayed for one and a half day in the intensive care unit, I was given the good news that I could be transferred to the general ward where I could go through the complete recovery plan. The nurses and the doctors there, they were very helpful. They helped me to recover gradually. I spent four days in the general ward before I was allowed to go home. A whole team including the RT, a physiotherapist, the nurses and doctors helped with my recovery. One of the first things they did was help me get moving again. Because the sooner you can get out of bed, the sooner you can go home. They also give me a lot of helpful tips about exercise and diet and other things to do at home to get back to good health. It has been two weeks after my bypass, but it's going to take about two to three months for my complete recovery. But I, I find that uh, my small way in the success operations from the surgery would bring about a big victory in that I'm going to have a healthier heart in time to come and this will ensure that I'm going to live healthily and to live longer.